What if I told you that there is an innovation that can reduce poverty, improve physical and mental health, nutrition, education, raise living standards, gender equality, and even a country's future productivity? What if I told you that this innovation already exists? Today, I want to talk about universal child grants. Universal child grants are cash transfers given to every child in the country to assist parents and caregivers with the cost of child rearing. It will be paid on a regular basis and to all children regardless of family income, hence its universal label. Therefore, the basic common properties of a universal child grant is that 1. It is in the form of cash. It is universal to the population of all children it has no conditions and it is paid on a regular basis. In Malaysia, children are often left out in conversations about poverty and welfare, despite the fact that poverty affects children more disproportionately. In Malaysia, the proportion of children in absolute poverty and in low-income households is higher than that of working-age adults or elderly persons, a trend that has been observed in the last three household income surveys since 2009. In 2014, for instance, 18% of children in Malaysia were in low-income households. This is in contrast to 11% of working-age adults and 14% of elderly persons. As of 2014, the absolute poverty rate among Malaysian children stands at 1.7%. This is nearly three times higher than the average poverty rate of 0.6% across all age groups. Malaysia's poverty line is also too low for an upper-middle-income country. If we use a relative measure similar to that of OECD countries, the percentage of Malaysian children who live below the poverty line will increase to 12.6%. Now, Malaysia is set to be an aging nation by 2030. As such, we need every child in the country to reach their full potential without being hindered by the effect, vicious effects of poverty. However, Malaysia's social safety net for children is woefully lacking. The Department of Social Welfare's current so per capita financial assistance for children of RM253 per month is the lowest since 2013. In a study of children living in low-cost flats in Kuala Lumpur, it found that 34% of households did not receive support from Malaysia's flagship cash transfer program, while only 4% received support from the Department of Social Welfare. This is despite being eligible. The government also recently announced that eligible households from the bottom 40% of households with the lowest incomes would receive an additional RM120 per child. But according to the UN Special Rapporteur on Extreme Poverty and Human Rights, this cash grant is too small and infrequent. This is where a universal child grant can make a difference. These grants have been shown to have very positive effects on children's well-being. Evidence from around the world documents improvements in multiple indicators such as health, nutrition, education, living standards, and even women empowerment with the potential for long-term productivity gains that benefit not just the child, but society as a whole. Research also shows that investments during early childhood are one of the most cost-effective ways to alleviate poverty and reduce inequality. The next question that I want to explore is, why cash? Well, the fungibility of cash means that it is inherently flexible, unlike vouchers and in-kind systems. With cash, families themselves can choose which needs that they need to prioritise. This is especially pertinent as the financial costs of raising a child are not insignificant and can fluctuate with time. Malaysia's Employees Provident Fund calculated that having just one child in the Klang Valley raises the minimum expenditure needed for a reasonable standard of living from RM4420 to RM5730. This is an increase of nearly 30%. There is often 
vocal opposition against giving out cash on the basis that it discourages work and leads to abuse. But these common misconceptions have been extensively debunked by evidence from around the world. A 2005 British study in fact showed that parents who are given cash benefits to help raise their children increase spending on items such as children's clothing, books and toys, and decrease spending on alcohol and tobacco. The next question that I want us to consider is, why should this aid be given to all children instead of those only from B40 or poor families? That's because evidence increasingly shows that poverty targeting methods can miss large numbers of its intended beneficiaries. A 2019 study of 38 social protection schemes show that a majority of the programs had exclusion errors above 70%, with the most effectively targeted scheme incorrectly excluding 44% of its intended coverage. That's almost half. In contrast, universal schemes had the lowest exclusion errors and were the most effective in reaching the poorest target recipients. For instance, Mongolia's universal child money scheme had virtually no exclusion error and reached 99% of the poorest 20% of children. The exclusion error of Malaysia's flagship cash transfer program, the Bantuan Sarakido or Bantuan Rayat Satu Malaysia, is also quite significant, especially in Putrajaya, where 30.8% of the B40 segment who live there do not receive the cash transfer, although they are eligible. Now, if the poorest beneficiaries are left out due to these high exclusion errors, wouldn't this then defeat the very purpose of targeting in the first place, which is to ensure that those who are most in need receive the aid? Therefore, I think it's safe to conclude that to reach the poor, we need to give to all. Furthermore, targeting also does not account for income fluctuations. We need to understand that being poor is not a permanent or fixed category because household income and finances can be affected by sudden and unexpected economic shocks at any time. For example, an economic lockdown from the coronavirus pandemic. A universal approach would ensure that children from near or newly poor families are included and are protected from the ramifications of such sudden economic shocks. The next thing is that targeting only the poor can be stigmatizing. Negative connotations surrounding welfare recipients around the world can even worsen poverty by discouraging the take up and adoption of welfare assistance. In the USA, for instance, recipients of the Women, Infants and Ch Children program reported that they were reluctant to use the food stamps that they received because it signaled to everyone around them that they were poor and had to rely on welfare. Evidence also continues to grow on the relationship between poverty and shame with particularly serious effects on children. A universal scheme that provides the same benefit to all children would avoid this particular pitfall. But also, a universal program would simply be more efficient in terms of cost and usability. Many poor families are either simply unaware or face complicated administrative barriers and application processes to access these targeted programs. Also, according to the International Labour Organization, universal schemes have the lowest average administrative costs at only 2.5% of total program costs. In contrast, targeted programs bear an average cost of 11%. Just to quote a Malaysian example, the hardware and software system for Malaysia's targeted petrol subsidy program cost the government 25.03 million ringgit alone, just the hardware and software system. With a universal approach, more of that money can go directly towards the children in need instead of these expensive and bureaucratic targeting systems. The next question that I want us to consider is, why give it without conditions? This means that recipients or caregivers do not need to satisfy any condition in order to receive 
this universal child grant. This is because Malaysia already performs well in the indicators that are traditionally used as conditions, such as vaccination coverage, access to healthcare, and attendance and enrollment in schools. So I don't see how imposing a condition would change behaviour in a way that can improve the outcomes for a child, aside from just adding on unnecessary cost and administrative burden and also impose more burdens on the caregivers and parents who really need the aid. We see this happening in Mexico's Progresa program, where cash transfers have a very minimal effect on immunization coverage within the country. This is because baseline immunization rates in Mexico were already high to start with. And imposing this condition actually cost the Mexican government 24% of overall program costs. Now, we go to the big question. Money. How much would this cost? Well, using 2017 figures, a universal child grant of RM200 monthly given to all children below the age of 5 would only cost 0.5% of Malaysia's GDP. Not even 1%. And this figure is well below the International Labour Organization's estimation of 1.4% of GDP for low-income countries. We need to remember that Malaysia is no longer a low-income country and it's aiming for high-income status. So implementing a universal child grant in Malaysia would therefore not be a fiscal or financial issue but a reflection of political will. Malaysia's expenditure on social protection has not risen in line with our GDP. As of 2017, our spending on social protection was the lowest of all Southeast Asian countries for which data was available. In fact, Thailand has recently expanded their child support grant to include eligible children under the age of 6, while Myanmar is widening their universal program to cover more states, even as Vietnam considers a similar scheme. Malaysia is in danger of falling behind our neighbouring countries. Introducing a universal child grant represents an opportunity for us to change this and invest in our children and our future generations' success and well-being.